Our speaker tonight is Andy Barclay. He's a California Highway Patrolman, and he's been patrolling Marin for years, and now he works as the uh, communication outreach person. And he's going to talk to us about aging well and driving smart. And I, as a person who's aging a little bit, I discovered it's better to learn more about how to drive safely and defensively. So here he is, Andy Barclay. All right, thank you very much. Um, I am not one for carrying around a microphone, so if you can't hear me somehow right now, I would say raise your hand, but if you can't hear me, that's kind of pointless. Um, so uh, I'm sure I'll find out if you can't hear me. Um, my name is Andy Barclay. As I already mentioned, I'm the public information officer for the Marin Area Office of the California Highway Patrol. I've been with the CHP for about 10 years now. I've spent all my time here in Marin. Uh, prior to coming inside, I patrolled all over all of our shifts, all over our county. I've done a little bit of everything. Um, so uh, a little bit on my background. Uh, I was I went to college as a communications marketing and public relations major so this was kind of right up my alley um, when I, I I picked this well I didn't really pick when I was born but um, I don't think my parents really could foresee that around the time I try to be entering the job market would be 2007 2008 well, not Good great time. for anybody who knows anything about uh, our economy uh, but I was actually very fortunate. I had decided that law enforcement was a career I wanted to go into, and law enforcement's always hiring, so here I am. Uh, this was a pretty easy transition for me. I like doing public outreach and community relations, and I like talking about our department. I do truly believe we're one of the best law enforcement agencies in the country, so I take a lot of pride in what I do. You, if you live in Moraine, you may or may not see my name in the newspaper just because I also do all of our media. Uh, it's not because I'm the guy out there doing all the hard work. I'm just the guy who gets to sit at the desk in the air-conditioned office and type about it. So um, that's pretty much a little bit about me, what I do. Uh, I, I kind of tailored this class a little bit differently tonight. So normally this is a two-hour long presentation that we do. I don't have two hours. I don't even have an hour tonight. So we're kind of whittling it down. And I also thought... Because this is a, a group that is interested in technology and computers, I've talked a little bit about our technology because I actually think it's pretty interesting. So before I get into the actual presentation, I thought I'd give you a little bit of background on us. So this wonderful piece of 1980-something equipment was the radio head that was in our patrol vehicles until four years ago. Yes, wow. That's scary. This controlled literally everything in our car, all of our lights, our radios, you name it, it did it. Um, issues, obviously, so this was mounted, think of where your radio is in your car, it was mounted right there. So basically, part of our training in Academy was learning how to use this without actually looking at it, because if we were ever driving lights and sirens to something or in a pursuit, you're not looking away at something trying to figure out what you're doing you just need to be able to remember where the buttons are figure it out as you go along um, a lot of negative feedback as time went on technology improved and the department finally said yeah you know what it's probably time for a new system so we went from this one little thing to this <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is the inside of, I actually just took this picture today. Uh, this is the inside of one of our patrol vehicles. So this is what we call our consolidated patrol vehicle environment. Uh, it looks really complicated, but it is actually one of the easiest pieces of technology for us to use. Um, I think one of the neatest things about it is it is entirely voice controlled. So as we're driving, we can actually just talk to our car and tell it what we want it to do. Um, so this is what our screen looks like. It's also all touch screen. So even if I'm not talking to it, all I have to do is touch on whatever I want something to do and it will do it. Um, some of the biggest improvements or some of the biggest problems that we had, obviously we're a statewide agency. We go all over the state of California. So as I'm transitioning from one area to another, say I cross the Richmond Santa Fe Bridge, I'm now in Oakland's area. Well, it used to be on this, I'd have to sit here and keep changing this until I got to Oakland's frequency. 
Well, okay. now all I have to do is just hit Oakland and it transitions over. Really wonderful when we're in pursuit. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of our pursuits for some reason end up going across the Richmond Santa Fe Bridge. Uh, <laughs> strange how it works out that way. But um, so a lot of technology changes. Um, one of the things I think is actually the coolest part of our, our, so there's our little voice button right there. We can hit that and talk to the car. But I think one of the neatest things that they came up with is this right here. It's a hand is control a device. Oh, I thought so your, your hand sits on it. So there's, your fingers go right in here. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's buttons in each little finger alcove. And those buttons all control different things. So on this device alone right here, Using this button right here is my radio. I can talk to my dispatch. I can talk to other cars. This is a three-way rocker switch. So with three buttons right here and a three-way three rocker switch, I actually have nine functions that I can control just by utilizing my fingers. Um, really, really great for what we call threshold incidents, pursuits, um, emergency responses, things like that. It really lets us focus more on driving and not on the technology that we're trying to get to work. So technology, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty uh, pretty interesting stuff. I think it's a, a really a really cool system though. They did a great job designing it for us. Um, and it's really allowed us, right? We always go out and talk about distracted driving. So we took that and looked at ourselves and said, well, how can we reduce our distracted driving? And there we go. Um, cell phone obviously is probably one of the, you know, if I talk about distracted driving, those people automatically, the brain snaps to cell phone but probably the second most popular or most common reason for distracted driving related crashes is reaching for an item. So if I'm sitting there trying to reach for a radio or reach for a button or something, that's you know not good. So that's the inside of our cars. There you go, just got a wonderful tour. Um, don't ever hit that button if you're ever in a CHP car. I, uh, I go to events all the time, I let kids treat it like a it jungle gym. It touch me with that color. I'm sorry? It screams, touch me. It That's does, but it's it's that way because... Is that a jet me? <clears throat> no, that is a, I'm about to die and I need help now. Oh. Oh. So if I hit that button, it sends every every unit, everywhere a distress signal. You'll have cars, motorcycles, bicycles, airplanes, helicopters, okay. allied agencies, you name it. Um, it is because I am fearing that my the end of life is near for me. So... Oh. Um, yeah, so a lot of technology in our cars. We'll see how long, uh, we'll probably have another system here coming up, but yeah, pretty interesting. So this is not part of the mirror system? Or no, we do not, CHP does not operate on the mirror system. That's probably a good thing. Um, yes and no, I won't get into too much of the specifics of it, but yes and no. It's, what is the mirror system? Mira is Marin's radio system. Oh. So because we're statewide, obviously we operate very, very differently. Oh, that's right, right. Um, Marin system operates at, if you're looking at frequency levels, I won't get too far into it, but frequency level very high. CHP is still using a very old system, but it, it works. It works. So, um, yeah. So that's pretty Lower much it. Lower frequency, longer distance. We, we do have the ability now to, um, we can actually, I didn't go in here, but if, if on our radio screen, we do actually have the ability to patch into that in emergencies. So if there was, say, a mass disaster in Marin County and all, and all agencies were you know, brought together, we can actually switch that over, but they only do it in, in an emergency situation. So, um, yeah, so let's talk about that. Um, whoa. What was that? I don't know why something just happened with my uh, presentation. We'll get back to that in a second. <laughs> um, so one of the things I actually want to talk about really quick before I even get into the A12 Drive Smart program, because we are talking about technology, um, one of the things that I see very often is, or that we really work with a lot, unfortunately, is people getting scammed out of because of technology. Um, I couldn't help, you know, we were talking when I came in. You all were talking about Apple products and things like that. I was thinking to um, back in. I think it was either January or June, I can't remember when. Uh, my wife and I had just arrived in Hawaii. We're standing in the airport terminal waiting for our luggage. And I overhear uh, a woman next to me talking to her husband and saying she just got an email from Apple saying that her um, it was a receipt showing that she had just purchased some $50 app, which she hadn't. 
So she was saying, well, hold on, I can go and it, I can click here and it'll take me into my account. And I immediately interjected and said, look, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to eavesdrop, but don't click that. You're about to get scammed um, because they're basically, you're going to go in, they're going to ask you to log in and that's it. You're done. Uh, everything's gone. So, um, you know, it, it's unfortunately something we see quite often. We get a lot of um, even at our office in Corte Madera, despite the fact we're the highway patrol and not your local police, um, we do get a fair amount of people that walk into our office that have become victims of, of scams, um, especially with things like that as it relates to technology. So uh, please, they're getting more and more sophisticated with how they operate now. A lot of the things they send are very realistic, but if you really look at it and you really pay attention to it, you'll see the issues. You'll see the little problems. Um, whether it's just the, the verbiage, the language isn't right, something's just off. If you actually look at the return email address, it may say Apple support, but if you look at the email address, it's not an Apple website. Um, so please just, just be vigilant. The other thing too, just to point out, is Wi-Fi. And now I know, I get it, everywhere we go nowadays, if you're not using your cell phone, it's always great to have Wi-Fi. Well, even if you're somewhere that you trust, say we're at Jason's with the Jason's public Wi-Fi, you may trust Jason's and you may be able to get onto it, but it's who else is on there that could be the problem. Because now that they're on the network, they can actually get in and begin to monitor some of the things that you're sending in and out. Not too big of a deal if you're looking at the news for the day, pretty big deal if you're looking at your investment accounts, bank accounts, things like that. So. Um, please, just abundance of caution. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's I'm here to talk about driving though. So let's <laughs> let's talk about that. Um, get through this. I don't know why this. Uh... So I'm just gonna we'll we'll jump into this. I I really whittled this entire presentation down. So I took a lot of slides out. So kind of work with me as we go through this. But um, the, ultimately, the purpose of the AgeWell Drive Smart program is to talk with drivers as they age to two things. Number one, understand and work through changes that all human beings go through as they age. And number two is have a plan if at some point you ever do have to stop driving. Um, my kind of, again, a little bit of history, I think it's best to explain how these things uh, pertain to me. Um, my, uh, my mom passed away a couple of years ago, unfortunately, uh, fairly young, so to speak. Um, which is just now me and my dad. Um, my dad is pushing, getting up towards 80 right now, so um, we have to have some fun conversations that my mom's not there to have with him anymore. Sometimes they have to do with driving. I think sometimes he, as proud as he am, is that I became a highway patrol officer. Sometimes he wishes I probably wasn't a highway patrol officer because uh, sometimes I'm actually telling him how things are or should not be. So. Um, I have started having this conversation with him so that he's, you know, thinking about some of these things. So why is, why is driving important? I mean, I'll ask, I usually start by asking the crowd, why is driving important to you? You don't have to rely on anybody else. Self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency. Yeah, yeah, right, absolutely. Lousy marine treated public transportation. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get there, don't you worry. <laughs> no, it enhances quality of life, supports an active lifestyle, and self-sufficiency and independence. It it's, it's, seems like a silly question to ask, but um, it really talks about being able to, or really makes you think about why this is so important. Uh, and it's understandable for us too. We, we go to our officers and train them as well about, look, you know, driving is an incredibly important thing. We have, as officers, we are actually obligated in certain situations to submit people for driver's license reevaluations if they meet certain criteria. Um, very often in the senior community because they may have certain changes that have happened over time that now make it not safe for them to drive. Maybe it's just not driving at night, or maybe it's not driving at all, depending on what happened. So um, we don't take that lightly because when we submit that, that um, renewal, or I'm sorry, that um, revaluation notice, until you're reevaluated, your license is gone until the DMV decides you're safe to drive, there's no license. So um, it's incredibly important for us to understand the importance of driving in general. 
Um, social activities, family contacts, recreational, travel, cultural, volunteering opportunities, this right now. Everyone who's here right now, working out their mind, driving is important. Great license plate. Thank you. Nice car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, still driving. So ultimately our goal is to say that you decide if and when you stop driving. Not everybody is going to stop driving at some point. It's not always the case. There are people that can drive you know, well into their 80s, 90s, farther. Um, I had a class one time I taught and somebody's 102 year old mother just renewed their driver's license. <laughs> Glad for them, little... <laughs> antsy but um, my uh, my grandfather was 98 when DMV renewed his driver's license within the last year of his life um, he laughed he did it just he at that point he had my aunt living with him so she was driving him everywhere but uh, he went and returned his license to DMV and kind of laughed so um, he could barely walk so kind of figured <laughs> probably not driving so um, there is no absolute criteria other than certain medical um, which you know, seizure disorders, things like that, your license can actually be uh, taken. Um, understanding alternatives. So this is one of my, my favorite myths and I'll, I'll, a little personal story about this. So one of the biggest myths is that driving risks increase with age and we would all be safer if older drivers are off the road. I have actually had people say this to me. One of the people who said this to me was a media outlet. So a few years ago, there was an incident where a senior driver um, in the, they were in the East Bay, I think, or the South Bay, had pulled into a parking spot in front of a gym, had pedal confusion, hit the gas, went through the entire gym, ended up killing one person. And the media obviously contacts us because we're, when it comes to driving, the highway patrol is usually the one they talk to about statistics and everything like that. So, the question got posed to me for some strange reason because it wasn't in my area is you know well hey you know let's talk about you know as people age it's it's less safe for them to drive and i disagreed with them and they said well what, how do you how can you say that i go well age doesn't necessarily mean a number doesn't necessarily relate to ability there are people out there who are in their 80s and 90s who drive perfectly fine yet there are people in their 30s that are the worst drivers I've ever seen, and I frankly have lost a lot of faith in our Department of Motor Vehicles for even letting them have a driver's license. Um, but this is something we have actually worked hard to really try to counter in the media, because it's not true, 100%. Um, all drivers know when to restrict or stop driving. This doesn't apply even just to older drivers. I mean, look at impaired drivers. We had on last Wednesday, at 7.30 in the morning, we responded to a DUI crash in Novato where the driver was a 0.26 blood alcohol concentration. Ooh, 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 at 8 o'clock in the morning? At, at, yeah, 8 o'clock in the morning, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. I, I don't, like, you were either so incredibly inebriated the night before that it still hasn't even burned off or you started drinking really early. Um, so not everyone knows when it's time to stop. One of the biggest myths is that uh, your doctor is going to tell you. Absolutely not. Um, some doctors will, but majority of the time, the doctor doesn't want to be the one that says, hey, you probably shouldn't be driving anymore. Uh, the medical field is a business, and you don't want to lose clients. So now there are certain things that they are legally required to report. Again, I mentioned if you have seizure disorders, epilepsy, things like that, they are legally required to make that notification to DMV. What about strokes, heart attacks? Um, heart attacks, no. Strokes, no, unless it has affected your ability to control something. So if you do have a stroke, you lose complete control of an arm or th something like that, then yes, they can make that determination. But it, a stroke just by itself is not a reason for an immediate suspension. Um, renewing your driver's license, DMV will automatically check your driving ability. I think I just touched on that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, older drivers know when their driving is unsafe. We responded to, uh, within the last year, we responded to a wrong way driver on northbound 101, a driver, I'm sorry, on southbound 101, the driver was traveling northbound into southbound lanes, driving in the fast lane, it was about one or two in the morning, uh, that came across the Golden Gate Bridge up over the Waldo grade. Um, so we actually stopped all traffic at Marin City, and sure enough, they came pulling right up to our officer, head to head, they stopped. 
Uh, we got the gentleman out of the vehicle. He was in his mid 80s, I believe. Um, we, we phrase it cognit as cognitive impairment, which is basically just when um, something is wrong cognitively that a person isn't aware of what's going on. Uh, we spoke with the gentleman. He said that he was on his way to his doctor's appointment. Uh, he had left San Francisco at like noon or one the day before. So obviously by the time we got to him, he was hungry, hadn't had anything to drink, um, very disoriented. So, um, but he was completely unaware when we told him he was on the wrong side of the freeway. He had no idea. He made it all the way across the Golden Gate Bridge? That's where he first, so we assume he got on somewhere right there. Because by the time the first call we got That's was him. That's why you need the toll collectors back. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Oh. So, um, I do actually. So, not, ne not necessarily everyone knows when their driving is unsafe. And, I, uh, yeah. exactly. Um, anybody who tells me that transport public transportation is easy to use in Marin County, I highly encourage you to travel anywhere outside of the United States, and you'll quickly realize that. They have yeah. good public transportation. Our idea of good public transportation is wrong. Not right. Yeah. So, um, and definitely, I will never be able to teach you everything you need to know to be a good driver. Um, but if you ever have a dog and they look like that, <laughs> let that let that be a sign. So really, um, and again, I'm trying to summarize all this, but. When we talk about taking control, a lot of the things that your doctor tells you as you age to things to do to keep yourself healthy, a lot of these actually apply to driving. Um, vision and hearing changes, understanding what those differences are. While, while my mom was still alive, I remember her saying at one point that she was becoming more and more uncomfortable driving at night. She had a problem with glare recovery, uh, dark light transition, things like that. Um, hearing changes, same thing. She never got to the point that she needed hearing aids. She was getting there, but... Uh, didn't quite get to that point. Um, very important for us, hearing, okay? Because if I'm behind you with my siren blaring and you're <laughs> doing this, because uh, you can't hear me. Uh, mental vitality, the reason mental vitality is so important is driving in and of itself is just a lot of multitasking, okay? If your brain is not good at multitasking, if it's begun to slip, driving is gonna become more hard. You're focusing on your speed, what lane you're in, um, staying within your lane, not swerving, braking, stop signs, stop lights, pedestrians, dogs, you name it. There's a lot going on as you drive. Uh, physical fitness, one of the more common things that we see is uh, range of motion in the neck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still extremely important being able to look over your shoulder, clear your blind spots. We have a, we had a situation where, um, I have a video actually from my dash cam, but I was driving down 580 coming through Richmond vehicle merges on the freeway into the lane next to me and pretty much goes right into the side of my vehicle. I slam on the brakes, take a minute to compose myself, turn on my lights, pull the gentleman over. Older gentleman had horrible range of motion in his neck, couldn't turn to look over his shoulder. I asked him, well, how, like, how do you change lanes? And his actual response is, I just hope no one's there. Oh, oh, wait, 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 can I bring something up on that? Why do people always back up and never turn around and look? Never. I mean, it, that amazes back me. Back up cameras. Yeah, and that's unfortunately so. Uh, I A lot of technology is wonderful. I love technology, first of all. I, I am a huge self-admitted techie. Um, unfortunately, in our cars nowadays, there's a lot of what I call design complacency. We become complacent with backup cameras, sensors, um, actually, we had an incident today. I'm still working to confirm it, so please don't go running to your media outlet saying this happened. Um, anyone from everyone familiar with the intersection of Nicasio Valley Road, Point Reyes, Petaluma Road? It's a T yeah. intersection. Yeah. yeah. Mm. A Tesla on autopilot blew through that stop sign today. Fortunately, there was no one. There was no one coming either direction, but they went straight through the stop sign, through the guardrail, through the fence, and ended up in the field. Uh -huh. So, oops. Well, autopilot. Yes. Stupidity. Not the autopilot. Well, so according to <laughs> Tesla and the driver, yeah. the vehicle is supposed to identify that stop sign and stop. It doesn't. I, I tell you right now, I've got the latest autopilot. Yeah, it does and not that's, identify stop signs. And that's what we're trying to confirm. But that was exactly what we. So the lady you said, "Drive we, my car. I'll, you can try it." And you no, no, no. I, I, so we we looked. We got tech stuff from Tesla, and there's something that they've started working on that is supposed uh, to eventually identify it, but. 
basically the individual um, realized too late that it wasn't going to stop, slammed on the brakes, but it was too late. They went straight through. Yeah. So. Usually the, it what, does what, slow what, down, wait, though. What's the difference between autopilot and, and um, was it on normal cars cruise where it just control. keeps, cru thank you, cruise control. Auto, auto, oh. me, just, I'm sorry, <laughs> I fly airplanes, it's not an autopilot. Uh, it steers the car, okay? Okay, but let's there's, just, that's, but let's talk about how Tesla markets it. I, it's right, it's very wrong. Right, so. Very wrong. Um, the, the difference is cruise control just really just limits your speed. Right. Now, if you have adaptive cruise control, adaptive cruise control is going to take into effect the, the vehicle in front, in front of you. Of you. Right. Autopilot, as Tesla calls it, will actually drive your car. If you hit that turn signal, it will verify using the tons of sensors that it has that there's no one next to you, it's safe to do so. The, the car essentially, the only thing that it does check is if you take your hands off the steering wheel for an extended period of time, it will enter a safety mode and it will slow and eventually stop the vehicle. Um, unfortunately, as we have seen, People if you are drunk yeah. and you pass out with your hands on the wheel, mm -hmm. the car will continue to drive as long as it takes until a CHP officer pulls in front of you and slows you down and stops you and arrests you for QI. Oh, that's a <laughs> um, so anyway, that's way off topic. but. Um, Sleep and rest, extremely important. It doesn't matter what age you are. Um, usually once a year in Marin, one of our fatal crashes is attributed to falling asleep behind the wheel. Um, medication, alcohol, we'll get into that. I'm trying to get through some of this, but I really want to talk about, just because we're here, um, I want to talk about one of the biggest issues that we have, which is, is prescription medications and combining with alcohol. Uh, and especially also combining with other prescription medications. A lot of times people have prescriptions from two different doctors. Those two doctors don't speak to each other, mm -hmm. so that the way those two drugs interact is not great for driving. Um, what we do encourage a couple things is always make sure that your doctors, you're talking to any doctor that you have about all of your prescriptions that you have from anywhere. Um, a lot of medications, also how they interact with over-the-counter, so if you have a, a uh, prescription medication, it may interact in a bad way with an over-the-counter medication, especially when you start mixing it with alcohol. Okay, my biggest plea too, and normally I'll go into this in a lot more detail, um, if you have prescription medications that fall into an opiate category um, or anything like uh, Xanax, Valium, anything like that, do not keep them where you keep the rest of your medications. Put them somewhere else. If you have children or grandchildren, that come over. Um, the biggest issue in our youngest, our younger generation right now, our youngest demographics is prescription pill abuse. Um, not necessarily alcohol, obviously we still deal with marijuana, but prescription pills are huge. Um, also, a lot of the service industry too, um, you have somebody come to your house to fix your plumbing, things like that. They know right where to go in the medicine cabinet or if you have all your medicine in a certain place, they go look for what they're looking for and procure it. So please keep it separate. If you have medications you do not need anymore, you can dispose of them at pretty much every law enforcement office in the county of Marin. You do not have to do or say anything. You walk in, there's a bin, you open it, drop your stuff in, close it, gone. No questions asked, nothing. It has to be in a baggie. It can be in the bills. It can be in the, the bottles. Really? Yep. So, um, and there's also usually a couple times a year a DEA take back day. We usually do two of them a year here in Marin. Um, we are working to get take back boxes in other areas like pharmacies. Um, unfortunately, the big issue right now is securing them because of the issue of people wanting these medications. Unfortunately, pharmacies can be robbed. So, what's DEA? Drug Enforcement Administration. Oh. Yes. Don't dump them down the toilet. Oh, yeah, don't yes, dump them down right, the toilet. Um, Please. I'm just going to grab my water. I'll keep talking a bit. <clears throat> yeah, don't dump down the toilet. Fish don't need Xanax. They're pretty relaxed as they are. So <laughs> I get it, it's California and there's a lot of stress, but your fish are fine, I promise. So please uh, dispose of your extra medications. Talking about slowing down, one of the biggest things that we. Excuse we, we I have a question yes, of course. Is there a, um, a test where there is for alcohol driving under the influence? Is there one for marijuana? Are you talking about a breath test or just in general? Breath test, you're on the road. There is no breath test, but the same field sobriety tests that we do for alcohol apply to marijuana like as well. Your... Well, like looking at people's eyes, um, all the field sobriety tests that we do. So 
the field sobriety tests we do to determine if somebody is under the influence of alcohol, they actually apply to all drugs. It's just depending on the drug you're under the influence of, it's what we're looking for. Um, things like stimulants are going to speed people up. Things, depressants, heroin, things like that are going to slow people down. It's all just we have to know what to look for. So. Yeah. Um, reaction time, again, one of the biggest things that deteriorates over time is our reaction time. So being able to perceive and react to an obstacle in the roadway, a vehicle stopping, whatever the case may be. Um, this is why, just in general, tailgating to me is probably one of the most dangerous things a person can do on the roadway. I have absolutely zero tolerance for tailgaters. One of my favorite stops of all time was when we got our brand new all white Dodge Charger that doesn't have lights on the top. And I had to go down to a meeting at the Golden Gate Bridge, drive down 101 in the number one lane. There's no markings on it other than on the side is the star and it says Highway Patrol. And I look in my rear view mirror and I just see a face. Oh my. Like no, no license plate, no hood, nothing. I, they're just so close to me, that's all I see. Okay. So they just stay right off my bumper. And I mean, even though it's not marked, there's 18 antennas on the top. <laughs> it's got a California exempt license plate, like if Hello? you're at all observant. So uh, we go on for a little bit. We're passing Marin City. I see a, as I'm passing a vehicle, I see an opening come up in the number two lane. And I'm like, oh, we'll see what happens. And sure enough, as soon as that opening just wah, and right about... I'd say mid rear quarter panel, just I'm like, ah, oh, nope, too late. Pulled over, got in behind them and uh, pulled them over. Uh, my favorite part of that was that they did, they denied they were tailgating me. So. <laughs> Wait, now do you have a, a rear view, a camera that records that? No. Oh. I don't. I I am the camera. I I testify to that. So, um, anyway, so reaction time. The reason. So the reason I bring that up. Um, judge by yourself. If you realize, if you sense that you've slowed down a little bit, give yourself a little extra following room in, in, with vehicles in front of you. The general consensus in the state of California in the courts is that safe following distance is one car length for every 10 miles an hour. Now let's be realistic here. Yeah. Okay, it's 65 miles an hour, six and a half car lengths. We don't have enough roadway in Marin County to handle everyone. Um, however, Question, worry about that. if I can't get my patrol vehicle between your cars, you're too close. You're too yes. Close. Yeah. Um, I'm an engineer, so a long time ago, I've known for a long time, it's been obvious to me that it's very difficult to judge distances straight in front of you. Mm -hmm. Am I 50 feet behind the car in front of me or 100 feet right. behind the car in front of me? There's another technique that uh, people use, and I don't know if you teach this one as well, but not trying to figure the distance, but counting time. Right. So I can see. Uh, it's later on, but yes, yeah. the so three second rule. Three seconds, so if I'm a minimum of three seconds now, on, the, on highways in Marin County and, and in, the, in the Bay Area in general, it's about, I find it about 90% impossible to keep three seconds behind, it is. But, but I do the best I can to keep as much blank yes. space, and I can so. usually average at least two, two and a half. And that's what we're looking for as well. Yeah. What we see, when we look at somebody who's tailgating, we look not only at the distance, but how you react to the distance. Yeah, my back If home. you stay right there, and you're just not moving, and you actually, what we're looking for is two, consistent brake pedal application, but you're, you know, you're basically doing this the whole time. Yeah, our testimony normally has to do with can we fit our patrol car between the two vehicles. Right. So, yes. Yes, sir. About how many cars should you leave in front of you if you're going 70, 80 miles an hour? Well, so the, the, the two second, there's two different methods that have been taught. The two second or three second rule is generally the way to go. So what you're all you're doing is you're saying, if you do the two second rule, you say the vehicle in front of you passes an, a fixed object, it should take you two seconds before you pass the fixed object. Mm -hmm. Usually that's a good good way to go. Yes. I think that's a great idea. My problem is all the cars that keep cutting in. Right. right. I know. Exactly. And I, it's it's I get it. It's absolutely amazing. They I know. Sit there and and especially the people that have to take the exit that's 500 oh, feet yeah, away the and they stay in the left lane, lane and go five lanes that's over. Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, I know. And yeah, where are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Not enough of them. It really drives me crazy are the number of people that change lanes without signal. Yeah, God, yes, thank you. Why, why? You guys would be so rich if you gave tickets for that. Okay, so let's. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to address that really quick. Um, I hear that all the time. You would have so much money if you do this. Here. We don't get any money for any tickets that we write. We are not funded by tax dollars. We do don't get money for tickets. We are funded solely by your vehicle registration. 
Okay. Last year in Marin County, the California Highway Patrol wrote 21,000 citations. Who gets that money? The county. 21,000 citations. Uh, so tr when, when you, if you sit there and go, where's the Highway Patrol? Trust me, we're out there. I've, I know. We're just. I was teasing you, I wasn't. Oh, no, no, no. I, no, no, no. I get it. But that's a common. I get people. So I run our social media accounts for, for okay. my office. And we get people all the time that are like, if you sat at this stop sign, <laughs> you could buy. 10 new patrol cars in the end of the day. Like, <laughs> well, I don't the, city, the, the cities get money, though, don't they, for the tickets they write? The cities do within the city, but the Highway Patrol doesn't okay, get anything. Exactly. It goes so to that the was aimed so. at the wrong person. Yeah, no, that's all right. I know what you're saying, though. I'm picking, up, I'm picking up what you put down. Yes. Maybe you'll cover this in another time, but I'm not comfortable driving on the two-lane roads in West Marin, and I drive maybe slower than people want to. They, oh, they back up behind me. I'm desperately looking for a place to pull over. Right. What are the rules? And, so impeding traffic, the, the California law that applies to that is, is impeding traffic. And what that says is that if five vehicles have built up behind you, uh, you are required to pull over and allow them to pass. Um, if, you're, if you're in that situation that you're uncomfortable driving those roads and you are traveling under the speed, if, as soon as you're traveling under the speed limit, you have to pull over and let a vehicle pass. If you're traveling at the speed limit and you got five vehicles built up, pull over and let them pass. If for no other reason, eliminate the problem of road rage than anything else. Um, so, um, how to be a better driver. Planning your trip, know where you're going. Now we're fortunate now, right? We got GPS and it tells us where to go. It will tell us when to go if you want it to. Um, check your vehicle before starting your engine. I, if I had a dollar, if my department had a dollar for every person, that we show up to that runs out of gas on the freeway, we'd have a lot of dollars. Um, and actually, it is a more common trend now. If I had a dollar for every person who runs out of electricity on the freeway, I'd have a lot of dollars. Um, Do you not laugh when that, I'm sorry. That I don't, I actually, it frustrates me a lot. Um, it, I, I will tell you that the closest I've come to death on this department twice has been a a vehicle has run out of gas in the on the freeway blocking a lane. Yeah. Oh. And a bat, and it's always it's never in that it's never on the strawberry flats where there's you know two miles of visibility. It's, up and over. it's always uh, yeah right over the top of a hill or right around a curve. Yeah. Always. So. Uh, yes. How common is running out of battery? Um, yeah, so it's becoming more and more common now. Uh, it's like you know, it's the same. The same mentality applies to people who run out of gas. It's the. I can make it, I can make it, I'll turn the air conditioning off, whatever, I'll cut all the sources, but um, it's still, it's happening more and more. The problem is, you know, if you run out of electricity, if the car dies, the car dies. Um, you know, I can also go and get you gas or like, uh, anybody ever seen the white tow trucks that drive around on 101? Oh yeah. You know what those are? Yeah. So those freeway are state tow trucks. Patrol, yeah. yeah, it's freeway service patrol. So that's actually a state service that's actually under the highway patrol. Um, and they patrol in Marin at least during commute hours, morning and afternoon commute. Um, they will tow your vehicle off the freeway. They will give you a gallon of free gas to get you going where you need to go. Um, unfortunately, they do not have electric chargers. So uh, they'll be towing you off. It's, it's really worse than that. If you blow the battery, Tesla won't guarantee it. It's about twelve thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Generally, you don't let that happen. Just for your yeah. Especially um, <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of moving on from this, um, I talked about planning a trip, but this is this relates to technology. I really want to talk about this. This is a big um, safety feature. So, back before we had smartphones, this was ICE in case of emergency, not the agency that everyone doesn't like in Marin, but. Um, <clears throat> In case of emergency was a technique that we taught people if you have a flip phone. What you would do is you would put ICE in front of your emergency contacts. So say, so my wife's name is Terry. So in my phone it would say ICE-Terry. What that meant is that if something ever happened to me, I was incapacitated, first responders would open up that phone, look at it and go, okay, where are the ICE contacts? Okay, these are the people I'm gonna start calling. Okay, well, now we have new technology. So, um, I'm gonna talk about iPhones because it's what I have and I know how this system works. So, this is, this is my iPhone screen uh, when it comes up on the lock screen. So if you've ever paid attention down here, uh, you can either put in your code, cancel, or hit emergency. So if you hit an emergency, it's gonna give you two options. It's gonna let you dial 911 
or an emergency phone call, or if you look down here, a little thing called medical ID. Okay, this is set up in your health app. Every iPhone has it. So if I hit medical ID, I blacked out all my information as much as I like you all. I don't really need you to know all my medical history. Um, Did you click on emergency to get to medical ID? Yes, so I clicked on emergency, which brought up this screen, and then I clicked medical ID, which brought up that screen. So what this does is for first responders, we can access this on a locked phone. All it does is it would tell us your name, how old you are, whether you're an organ donor or not. Um, it will tell medical personnel any allergies. So I don't know, I, I can tell you, I'm allergic to codeine. So it says on here, I'm allergic to codeine. So they know, don't give me anything with codeine in it. Um, also on here, it lists all my emergency contacts and it tells them who it is. So spouse, so it gives them my wife's name and her phone number, my dad's name and his phone number, um, the confidential, the, the 24 hour back line to my office. So we can go in and actually see who these people are. We know who we need to contact, but the other options that are in here is you can list any medications you take, any health conditions you have, anything at all, you can list it and it will show up in that screen. It is a phenomenal tool if we can't ask you. And if, if uh, hospital staff or paramedics can't ask you, it is a great tool. Yes, you can still always get one of the medical ID bracelets that provide that information or provide limited information, but this is very thorough. How and do it, you get, how do you do, I don't have that. Although I'm sure I did. You have to set it up. So you have to go into health and actually do your medical ID. This won't show up until you've set it up in health. Gotcha. Um, but it also helps because I know if I'm calling somebody's spouse, if I'm calling somebody's parent or their work, whatever the case may be. Um, so very, very, very good system. I highly encourage everyone to utilize this if you have an iPhone. Um, if you have an Android, I've been told that they have similar um, apps you can put on there as well. I don't, ex I don't. Yes, it says I see emergency contact. Perfect, there you go. Um, I still have my name so, named Ice. Wonderful system. All right, um, something got kind of mixed in, but I'll kind of I'll try to wrap this up a little quickly. Um, checking things like your windshield, your tires, your lights, your oil level, your fuel. Uh, I just talked about that. Um, as we get into our rainy season, add uh, windshield wipers on there as well. Um, please always make sure that your windshield wipers are in good condition, and also make sure you have windshield washer fluid. I've had a lot of issues, or I shouldn't. Have, I've had a lot of issues. I responded to crashes before where people claimed that um, there was, you know, their windshield was dirty and the sun in the afternoon was hitting it and basically just created a, yeah. they couldn't see anything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, be able to clean your windshield, have good windshield wipers. It, it benefits you greatly to make sure your vehicle is in a good state before you start driving. Um, from an emergency preparedness thing, this is actually kind of interesting, something that came up for fuel. Now, if you have an electric vehicle, you charge it at home, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, after the fires in 2017, one of the things that we really started pushing is, as much as possible, make sure you have at least a half a tank in your vehicle at all Absolutely. times. If you have an emergency, say we especially will utilize, we'll talk about West Marin. Say we have a massive fire in West Marin and we start having to evacuate people out, it may be a long time before you get gas. So try as much as possible, don't let that ride down to I know if it says zero, I've actually got 30 miles. Don't, please don't do that. Um, from an emergency preparedness level, make sure that your vehicle is fueled or charged, whatever the case may be. Um, always make sure you can see out of your vehicle, uh, adjusting your mirrors. Um, by the way, seat belts are technically called lap and shoulder restraints. Okay, they're called that because that's where they go. It's not a lap and under your arm belt or a lap and behind your back belt or whatever. Um, the way the California law reads, if you are not wearing it as intended, as designed, it's the same as not wearing it all. So that's a, you can be cited for that as seatbelt violation. Um, we have right now in the mid 90 percentile of people, uh, the compliance rate with our seatbelt laws, pretty good. Uh, typically the, the 5% or so that we still have issues with are my dad, uh, mm -hmm. somebody who grew up, you know, at the beginning of his childhood and into his teens, never having seatbelts or not wearing seatbelts. Um, for most teenagers now, it's not even a question anymore. I, I go in and teach classes at local high schools and I say, hey, how many of you get in your car and would, you know, 
is it's just natural that you put your seatbelt on and they agree yeah. because they've been taught that way. So please wear it correctly. Um, <clears throat> anybody in here or anybody ever tells you that a seatbelt is more dangerous than it is good? I, I, so if you're, if it's somebody in here and you don't want to say anything, I will tell you, you are hundred percent wrong. Um, I, I've had people come up and say they don't wear it because, um, it, it's going to get broken in a crash and you can't get out of the vehicle. I can't tell you now how many crashes I've been to that result that turned into a fatal crash just because somebody wasn't wearing their seatbelt. Um, we had one on highway 37. There were two people in a vehicle. Uh, driver was not wearing his seatbelt. Passenger was wearing her seatbelt. Uh, they got in a crash, passenger had minor injuries, almost nothing at all, and driver died on scene. So please wear your belt. Headrests, okay, always make sure it's there, okay? It's there to support your head. It's not, you know, down below at your neck or anything like that. Um, no huge gaps in between. Make sure it's adjusted correctly. We'll talk oh, about your friend. Safe distance, yeah, that's pretty much what it looked <laughs> yeah. like. Safe distance. Um, Keep to the right, what we mean by that is just, if you're not, I'm talking about on the freeways here, stay out of the left lane if you're not passing, please. It's one of the biggest issues in that I've seen in driving is um, entitlement. If you drive entitled, it's, it's gonna be yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people who will sit in that fast lane at 65 miles an hour and say, I'm entitled to be in this lane, I'm going the speed limit. Well, a couple things. Number one, we'll probably move you over um, just because it's, it's, it, it can be very dangerous, especially if you have somebody who's flying at 85, 90 miles an hour, not paying attention, and they come across a vehicle doing 65 miles an hour. Strawberry Flats, about two years ago, two and a half years ago now, one of our officers got rear-ended. He was doing about 75 and the person who hit him was doing about 85. Mm -hmm. Number one lane, fast lane, rear-ended a highway patrol car. Oh, that's wrong. People should I mean, be it's doing just, that. you know, so yeah. stay over. Um, slow down unless it means go below the speed limit, please. Um, I would say that the average speed in Marin County is probably on the freeway at any given point. It's probably about uh, 70 to 75 on average. Um, yes. Okay, Highway 101, south of Marin's, uh, of the uh, Civic Center. Civic Center. Mm -hmm. It's uh, normally 55. It is 55. Oh. It used to be huh. enforced. Yeah, it still is. We write a ton of tickets in that area. R really? Why isn't it 65 Fine. like the rest of the place? Because of the design of the roadway. So here's what you're going to look at next time you drive through there. Look okay. at the shoulders and the center divides. Okay. Okay, and incorporate the Waldo grade in there. All right, so if you look at that well, section of the roadway, yeah. and also look at the on-ramps and off-ramps. Yeah, look at true. this, look at right here, Sir Francis Drake. Mm -hmm. Between Sir Francis Drake on-ramp and the Paradise Drive on-ramp, it's a nightmare. Because you have the Sir Francis Drake on that turns into the Lucky Off, mm -hmm. right where the Lucky On comes in, but also merges a lane over, which then turns into the Madeira <laughs> Off, yeah. and the Madeira On Ramp, which is a very sharp turn, which means you're taking it pretty slow if you're not, a, you know, if you're not drifting it, which is also the Paradise Drive Off Ramp, which is extremely busy due to all the malls over there. It is, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's engineering is the, the, the engineering of the roadway is why it's 55 from yeah. Civic Center on. I don't see why the fast lane can't be going that, that speed. But but I also don't understand on ramps before off ramps. I will never understand that as long as I live. Why would anybody do that? Just, I'm, I'm just, that's, yeah, no, that's no, why I'm it just, is. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. It's, There's an engineering joke about that. Yeah. Well, it's, so it's, that's. It's, it's, it's natural selection or something. Yes. If, if it's okay for people to go 75 in it's the not. fast lane, why have a speed limit? It's, it's not okay. I'm not, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying that on average, if I go out there and, and get the gauge of traffic, of course, obviously, once a highway patrol officer is there, everyone's doing whatever the speed limit is, but um, it, it's not. I mean, we, we go out there and again, 21,000 citations last year, 21,000 citations. We write a ton of tickets and it's not for any other reason than we need to slow people down. We need to stop the bad behavior. I mean, it's just, how it is. But so, and the, and the average speed of 101 to me in the last 
15 years has gone up and up and up. Oh, and yeah. The two lane and the three lane, Absolutely. for example, right in the middle. Absolutely. I, I, and and it's, it's driving habits in general over the last 10 to 20 years have changed drastically. And, and it's, hmm. there's a lot of theories as to why that is. There's no hard concrete evidence of what's causing it. But um, I personally, through my professional observations, um, everyone just seems to be in a rush nowadays. No one leaves until, if, if I know that it takes me 35 minutes to get to work, I'm leaving 35 minutes. And when I'm delayed by a stoplight for two minutes, I'm, I'm now, I'm not saying I, I actually do this, but I'm saying this is a very common thing. People, it's why, it's why when it rains, we push so hard telling people, leave early, you're going to be delayed because inevitably, and I hate to say this, but Wednesday was a Wednesday in Novato is an example of this. You get somebody who's running late, driving too fast on a wet roadway. They lose control on in this situation on Wednesday, lose control, overturn down a hillside and a four year old boy died. It's, it's, it's what I've seen. It's people rushing. No one wants to sit in traffic. And I hate to say this, but if you don't want to sit in traffic, the Bay Area is not the place to be. We, we have a lot of it. Sir? Does your authority extend beyond the, the highways to the small city streets? Every now and then I'll see a CHP cruiser oh, yeah. going around the mm -hmm. small streets, and I wonder what in the world is he doing So there? we have authority anywhere in the state of California. We have jurisdiction anywhere in the state of California other than federal property or um, Native American reservations. But you don't patrol those. Uh, oh, yeah. we, oh, they we, stop and... We don't, but we will go. Like, if I have to say I'm driving from, you know, the freeway out to um, Point Reyes Station. So we cover not only the freeways, we cover all unincorporated areas. Yeah. So we're the, we go the same place the sheriff goes. We just split the work. So we will go anywhere. We will do, we will enforce laws everywhere. So we can be in cities, counties, you name it. Hey, you regularly patrol uh, Belmar and Keys. Because it's unincorporated. It's yep. unincorporated yeah, so area. we go out in Belmar and Keys all the time. All because the time. it's So we go out and do enforcement out there. Okay. But yeah, we'll go. If it's a CHP area, we'll, we'll go out there. So um, so there's that was the image I was looking for. There's your two kind of two-second guidance. So there's your fixed object. Front vehicle passes. Count two seconds before the rear vehicle passes. Um, this is a huge... Um, Really, I think one of the biggest and most important things is be aware of stress as you drive. What stresses you out? So again, I'm going to use my personal example. If you look on my phone right now, I have my podcasts. And when I drive home, usually driving home at night, in the morning it's weird. When I go in, I have my cup of coffee, usually nice and relaxed. But when I'm driving home at the end of the day, and remember, I'll be honest here, driving as a highway patrol officer, being off duty and driving is extremely stressful. <laughs> because all the stuff that I never see when I'm in a patrol car is everywhere when I'm in my personal car. Yeah. And I used to sit, I used to listen to music on my way home. And it did, I'd listen to, I listened to pretty much everything. And I actually sat there and I realized that the music, what, depending on what I was listening to, could really actually affect my mood and what I was doing. So I started thinking about it, I'm like, all right, how can I do this? So I started getting audiobooks. So I went on Audible, got a bunch of audiobooks, actually worked out great, learned a lot. Um, and then also I went on and got podcasts. So when I, I will always remember growing up, um, my dad was a huge fan of old time radio and I would always sit there and listen to old time radio shows with my dad. So if you go on my uh, phone right now, I've got every episode of Dragnet that I listen to all the time. I love Dragnet. Um, Johnny Dollar. Um, I, I, I just, it's, it's, it calms me down. It just makes me relaxed when I drive. Um, so be aware of what stresses you out and, and do what you can to counter that stress as much as possible. Obviously, please avoid distractions. Um, it is illegal in the state of California to even, too many pockets, to even hold a phone in your hand now in a car. Oh. If you hold your phone, it is the same. It doesn't matter if you're texting. It doesn't matter if you're talking. If the phone is in your hand, it's a ticket. So now with the... You don't have to be using it? Just nope. If it's in your hand. So what happened was kind of the really quick background on that. So there was, it used to be you had to be talking or doing some form of text-based communication. Well, uh, a court in a, basically a, 
somebody cited a driver for using their cell phone. The driver went to court and said, I wasn't using a text-based communication, I was using my GPS. And the court ruled in favor of the defendant, which established case law. So what they did is they went back and said, fine, we're just gonna, we introduced a law that said, you can't even have it in your hand anymore. Um, however, I will say, if you look at the research behind cell phones, this right here, I can sit here and I could hold this the entire class and walk around and I'd be fine. Now, if I put my wife on the other side of this and we start talking about our, or she starts talking to me about her day, That's not, okay. That's now not, it's going to be an issue because I'm now cognitively distracted. Right. My brain is going two different directions. So, um, this, oh man. Oh, oh. I just. <laughs> oh. Wait, shave or make. Wait, which one? shave or makeup. makeup. Do it at home. Like if you put a if you put a mirror. Put a put a mirror. mirror. Now I know put a sharp face. blade next to your throat, or if you're a, a woman putting on mascara, a pointy object by your eye, um, and ignore road rage. The phrase we use is Fido. Forget it. Drive on. Um, just it's it's easy to get frustrated and mad. Um, this is a huge. I will tell you that. Um, talking about driving in the last 10 to 15 years, the number of road rage calls that we get has increased dramatically. It is incredible how many road rage calls that we get. Okay, um, just to just so you know, um, the one finger salute is not. I, I can't do something to somebody for that. That's freedom of speech. I hate to say it. It may be rude, but um, now if they start, you know, trying to hit you or point a gun at you, then yeah, absolutely, please call me, I'll, I'll come and take care of that. But um, stop signs, traffic lights, stop, okay? Stop means complete cessation of movement. It is, it is not an acronym for slight tap on pedal, it is completely <laughs> stop, all right? Um, rainy days, we're, we're gearing up, we've already had a couple early morning rainy days, I talked about Wednesday, our unfortunate fatal collision. Um, on a wet roadway. Um, our, our normal advice, rainy days, slow down, increase your falling distance, give yourself more time to get where you're going. Okay, please do all of those. Uh, right of way violations, a lot of that has to do talking about merging without yeah. using a turn signal. Um, when you're merging, when you're coming onto a freeway, who has a right of way? The person that's coming on or the person that's on the freeway? The guy on the right. The, freeway. The, freeway. the person on the freeway has a right of way. They're established in their lane. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to drive a few years ago. Um, was taught that the concept of right away was something that you were required to yield, that the, you could never assume the right away. Yep. That, that legally, um, the person in this case getting on the freeway is required to yield right away to the Correct. person on the highway. Because they're already established. And, yes. Uh, so you know, if I find for my own driving that I'm, I try to be as aware as I can if somebody's going right. on. If I see they're going to, you know, that, that they don't care to see me. I'm, I'm, my attitude is, yeah, it pisses me off, but but I'd much rather be a little pissed off at him than, than, than have an accident. Yes, 100%. And, and you know, and, and when I'm getting on, I do my best consciously, most right. of the time, hopefully, to yield, to not pull in somebody, yeah. somebody. I try to find the way I can get into it, into the traffic flow without, you know, minimizing the weight, the degree to which I'm trying to. So I'm, I'm constantly trying to yield as right. best I can. How do you do that in Sausalito where there is no room whatsoever? You're literally off the freeway, then you're on the freeway. Yeah. Are you talking about like the Alexander on-ramp to Northbound 101? Like from Cavallo Point, wherever that is. Oh, yeah, Alexander on-ramp yeah. to Northbound 101. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, so normally when I'm getting on that ramp, I will sit there and look. I will cruise up the ramp and I will watch that traffic coming up and I will wait until I know that I have enough space to go Should without stopping. Should there be a yield sign there? Maybe. No, because Same it's you're required to yield to the there's it's understood. Yeah, I mean it's understood. You are you are entering a roadway. Anytime you enter a roadway, you're required to yield to the person already established on the roadway. And that's got the same issue getting on the bridge coming kind of north from uh, from the now, see, point center there. That's why forty five and fifty five mile an hour that's that area right there goes from forty five to fifty five. That's why it's still fifty five, because that is a perfect example of a horribly designed on ramp. Yeah, that was really bad. Um, and I'll get I'll get to you in one second. But one thing I wanted to say, yeah. we're talking about rules of the road and laws. Yeah. None of that replaces common courtesy. Exactly. Right. I, I was raised by my parents. If if I turn my turn signal and somebody lets me in, I don't care if I'm in my regular car, patrol so thank car. You. Thank right. you. Exactly. My favorite uh, complaint I ever got was, 
I, I was in a patrol car. We have a cage that's right here, you know, so I get in a patrol car, turn my turn signal, and somebody lets me in, and I go like this. And they didn't see you. No, no, no they saw me, but oh, they, they didn't see all my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to politely explain it. They called my office, complained to my sergeant. My sergeant called me in. I'm like, what are you talking about? I waved to them and said, thank you. So, um, but common courtesy is... Personally, this is my personal belief, common courtesy is something that seems to have gone by the wayside, unfortunately. I, I believe, um, especially in our younger generations. Um, just my personal opinion, though. Sir? You need to put a 100-foot sign on Highway 37 okay. coming to 101 South. I can't tell you how many times I've had people just want to run the road. So 101, so we're talking westbound 37 transition to southbound 101. Yep. They that is come, also the Ignacio off ramp. That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they and they come flying down there. That's a racetrack. Uh, <laughs> it passes Sonoma Raceway, therefore it yeah, is a racetrack. Right. <laughs> I, I work there. Be nice to them. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm out there all the time at Sonoma Raceway. Yeah. Um, Wednesday night. Speed limits, exactly. Uh, freeway driving. I, I think freeway driving is you know one of the most. Um, it can be one of the most stressful driving situations. Um, other than driving in the city of San Francisco, yeah. it's just me. Um, when my mom was oh, San Rafael was right sick. Up there. Yeah, my, when my mom was sick, um, the last year of her life, or the last ten months of her life, um, she was at UCSF up on Parnassus a lot, and my dad just despised driving into the city. Um, you know, he was constantly conflicted, obviously wanting to be there to support his wife, but um, he he was by the time he got home, he was extremely stressed. Oh yeah. Um, so, yeah. So identify again, identify the stresses. Um, talk a lot. Um, so that's actually, uh, yeah, that's almost pretty much the end. Stop sign, stop that we talked about that. Please pay attention to signs. Remember if a sign is black and white, it is a regulatory sign. If you do contrary to what that sign says, it is a violation of law. So like no right turn on red, things like that. Uh, no U-turn, stop sign, or speed limit. <laughs> Uh, rainy days, we just talked about that. Okay, I had this happen yesterday. I'm driving through Solano County. Um, I turn on my lights because I'm going to something. I'm in the left lane. The person in front of me pulls to the left. What is the matter with that person? I sit there and continuously say over my public address system that is deafening, pull to the right, pull to the right, pull to the right, pull to the right. I can now not pass because if, number one, you pull back out and hit me, I'm passing on the right, which if you get into the law about yes. emergency vehicle right. lights, I can't do that. Um, but also if they re-enter traffic and get hit, I've now put them in that position, I can be liable. California, we love lawsuits, so. Yeah. Um, always pull to the right. Um, big design feature now on cars, they're quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter inside, which means you're not hearing more and more and more outside. Um, so just pay attention as you Did drive. Did they eventually move to the right? Yes, because I actually screamed at them continuously to move. So um, be aware of blind spots. We talked earlier. Um, one of the individuals in this class had attended one of the full Age Well Drive Smart classes talking about blind spots. Uh, she ended up going out and purchasing an aftermarket uh, addition to her rear view mirror that actually extends your field of view. That allows her to now see in blind spots as well. So um, something she identified as a as a uh, something that could help her with her driving. So again. Um, you know, always looking at those things. Was that the outside the, mirrors or the, the It was mirror? actually on the inside. So you can get, so two things you can do. You can either get the little conk, the round concave mirrors. Yeah, which I don't think you can see anyway. That go on the outside. All it's there to do is just give you an idea if there's somebody next to you. It's not, you're not identifying anything. Yeah. But the, the internal, the inside mirror is. Um, wider. Or the other one is an inside mirror and it does increase your, your field of view. So. Um, Watch out on trucks, remember this is, they can't see you. And more importantly actually, and I teach this in all my team classes, if you're this car right here, they can't see you either there. You can't see what's in front. Oh, so when this truck scary. slams on its brakes, uh -oh. you have no idea because you didn't see it coming. So not a great spot to be. Um, number one area for traffic collisions other than the freeway is residential neighborhoods. It's like a constantly changing obstacle course. You've got children, you've got dogs, you've got debris, you've got cars backing out, you've got, you name it, it's happening. Um, so just, that's why it's 25 through there. Um, don't tailgate, be cautious at intersections, uh, making left turns. Uh, anybody here ever heard UPS never makes left turns? 
That's right. right. UPS policy does not make, yep, drivers do not take left turns unless they're required to, but they'll make rights. Two reasons, number one, they say it saves gas, and number two, it's actually safer because when you're making a left turn, you're judging multiple things. Any traffic coming towards you, pedestrians not only in the sidewalk in front of you, but the sidewalk you're about to turn across, there's a lot to look at, so. I, I'm trying to figure out why they have those pedestrian crossing right before the light turns green, so then they give somebody literally a head start to get hit. Well, they get, well, no, the person has the right of way so that they can get into the intersection so that the people will see them. It's literally half a second. It's so, there's so not enough time for that. But they still, it, it, again, regardless, we're talking about drivers not paying attention. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> so. Um, if you decide to uh, restrict your driving, whether it's daylight only, non-freeway, non-rush hour, I don't know if you can tell me when that is in Marin County, I'd love to know. <laughs> I don't think it's a thing. Um, it doesn't even matter day of the week now. Uh, fair weather only driving. If you have that ability and you can do so, please do it. Um, is it time? Meaning, is it time to start thinking about uh, what's going to happen when you can't drive anymore? Start thinking about resources that are out there. These are some different things that, um, that you can go through. Um, DMV has a website specifically for senior drivers. You can hop on there, um, look at some of the different resources they have. Uh, when it comes to resources, for senior drivers, depending on where you live, I encourage you to check with your community centers. Different communities within Marin have different options, like Sausalito has a service, um, Santa Fe has a service, there's different services out there, so check within your communities. Um, family or friends, I've told my dad for a long time, I'm here if you need, I'm here to drive you if you need it. Raise me, at least I can do is give you a ride somewhere. Um, public transportation, if, it's convenient for you and it's something you're able to do. Um, paratransit, light rail and trains, um, the, the smart train, or I live in Petaluma, we call it Soul Food Express because it drops you off right by Soul Food. Mm -hmm. um, That's very funny. Taxi services, others, other wheels, Uber and Lyft. This is no way I'm not endorsing any of these companies, I'm just saying these are some of the options. Um, Uber now, if you actually go into the Uber app, they have added a feature for um, Handicap transportation. So they will actually have drivers that are certified by Uber, for whatever that's worth, to uh, assist with people who have mobility issues. So um, one thing I will say about Uber and Lyft, um, always remember that you are, whereas when you get into a taxi, a taxi is licensed and bonded. They have a minimum $1 million insurance policy. Uber and Lyft have whatever insurance the driver of that vehicle has. All they're required to do is provide proof to Uber that they are insured. They may have the most minimal coverage out there, but that's what you're going to be covered under. Okay? Remember, they're not employees of Uber or Lyft. They are subcontractors. So. That's very scary. I know. Well, that's, there are more laws in California. So, for example, one of the laws that has already changed is, so for taxi drivers, the blood alcohol concentration is, a point, is 0 0.04. So for the rest of adults, it's 0.08. For any taxi driver, you know, anything like that, it's 0.04. Well, a law actually just passed that now applies that to Uber and Lyft as well. Okay. So they are required to abide by that same. And there's, there's a lot that's changing. There have been some pretty high profile cases with Uber and Lyft. Um, San Francisco had one, or I actually had a couple, um, that are changing now how that's gonna work for liability purposes, so. If you feel impaired or tired, where do you pull over that's safe? Where does one pull over that's I would safe? recommend, well, first of all, off the freeway, never stop on the freeway. Right. Um, I recommend a shopping center, a gas station, something that's lit that has services. Mm -hmm. So if you need something, if, first of all, if you're feeling, if you feel impaired, you shouldn't be driving in the first place. No, but if you're driving along, all of a sudden you feel yourself like, like doing the... So you're talking tired, yeah. not impaired. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, if you're feeling tired, Pull off the freeway, go to the gas. Uh, normally at night for us, it's funny because you know, dr drowsy drivers and drunk drivers drive the same. Yeah. The yeah. difference is when I turn my lights on, drowsy drivers wake up. Drunk drivers don't get sober. <laughs> so um, normally we will tell people, hey, look, just pull off the freeway. Whatever you got, you get out, walk around a little bit, get the blood flowing, but find a safe place. Never stop on the freeway. It's actually illegal to do that unless it's an emergency. So but if, if you literally want to fall asleep, it's okay to do that in a parking lot? That's up to them. It's private property. So, yeah, I mean, we're not going to come. 
we won't come bother you. We'd rather you do that. Now, if say that, say you pull into a gas station and you fall asleep in there, and they like come over and tell you to leave. It's private property. They have the right to do that. But like say hypothetically, um, I were to pull somebody off at Sir Francis Drake right here, and they're super sleepy, and they say, you know what? I just I need to take a nap. Maybe I would suggest they drive over to the Bon Air Shopping Center where it's a ton of parking spaces, and no one's probably going to bother them. Hypothetically, of course. Um, so really kind of coming back to it, and again, I've, I cut this presentation way down. Um, we get that driving is extremely important. There's a lot of factors that come into you know, how long to do it. I didn't even put the age group statistics in there because statistics just seem to put people to sleep more than a warm room late at night. Um, so really, you know, we always encourage people to take control of their driving life. What we mean by that is identify any issues that you may have and find ways to either improve on them, change them, or eliminate them. Um, I have had people, I had somebody in one of my classes who did tell me that they don't make left turns anymore. They make the rights. So um, become a better driver. Just keep yourself engaged, okay? Multitasking. So things like this are actually a great example of ways to keep your mind going, keep your mind sharp. You're learning new things, keep your brain going. Um, Technology, it's, it's interesting because we talk about um, video games, for example. Video games are, a, are an example of the younger generations, actually, when it comes to multitasking. I mean, I, I have a cousin who is 16, and that kid can play a video game, type a text message on his phone, and somehow eat at the same time, and I don't know how he does that. Um, He's going to be a surgeon. Watch it. Watch yeah. If we can get him to step away from the computer, maybe. Um, we, while there may not necessarily be a time to stop, we ask that you think in your mind that there will be a time to stop. And if that were to happen, what would you do? Plan for that. Hopefully you never need it. But just have that plan in your head. Look around at what the resources are around you. What do you have as a support base, friends, family, whatever the case may be. Um, and then understand the alternatives. We talked about buses, Soul Food Express, Uber, <laughs> Lyft. You name it, um, just understand what those other resources are for you. Um, again, I've, obviously I have a big thing for dogs, so um, always wear your seatbelt, number one most important thing. Um, thank you for being here. I took way longer than I had anticipated, but I, I hope it was. I hope you it was. You got 20 more. I do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, before you go, oh, come isn't on, there no. a formal program, the AG? Isn't there a formal. Aging class that we could take. So the oh, highway yeah. patrol, this it is this the age well drive smart class. I just took selected slides from it and brought it here today. Because it, it, you get a certificate or something. You do yes. So here's so let's be very clear. So there is the highway patrol version, which some insurance companies will accept and some don't. But then there's things like the AARP. So yeah. here's the difference. Mine is free. Okay. AARP's is not. You have to pay to attend that class, and it's I think it's like four hours, eight hours, something like that. You can take it um, online. online. Can you really? Yes. Oh, well, there you go. Yes. So um, it is a little different. AARP has connections and things like that. You, so. Would you register down at your office in the corner? You don't even have to. So I have one coming up October. How do we? How do you publicize those? Through the libraries, usually where we host them. Oh. Okay. Um, we also publicize them on. Um, Sorry, I'm getting my calendar up here to tell you when the next one is. Um, we also usually publicize them through our social media um, on our Facebook pages. Um, How many people do you know that are over 70 that literally? Exactly, which is why Facebook that's, page. and that is a big, so normally what we'll do if we're going to a community to do it, we'll advertise within the community at the library where we're hosting it because that's actually where we get a huge amount of people. Um, we'll also go to like if there's a senior center um, community centers, things like that, and try to physically publicize it there. Um, the next class I have is on uh, Friday, October 25th at 1 p.m. at the Fairfax Library. Is it on your website? If somebody goes to your website, can they find that? Uh, the CHP website is, the is for the entire state, so it's not on, they don't edit like every different event that we do because it's an entire state website. Like, so there's no place to go to like Marin on, on that correct. website? Correct, yeah. There is, that, but that all it's going to do change. is tell you, we're trying, again, we have a hundred and something 
CHP, 120 something CHP offices across the state. So getting something set up that is manageable at an area level. Yeah. Because now the issue that we're having is that a lot of um, a lot of laws have changed as far as accessibility go on websites. Meaning, if I post something, I have to post it so that it is compatible with. Um, oh, iPhones. Talked and well, no, for people with disabilities. So oh. for um, you know, for blind people, so it will read it. Like um, it's called alt text. So basically, like if there's a picture, yeah. I've actually put in text that says like picture <laughs> of yeah. CHP car and whatever. So anyway, we're working on it. It's just integrating in all this new technology that has to go into it as well legally. Um, so it's it's getting there. That's interesting. There's also I have an issue with where signs are placed. There, there's some signs are placed really high. <laughs> Like like the no left no right turn in Nevada in Nevada was one that caught my attention. It's like the one at Roland. Yeah, you don't there's always see that. Especially five, the there's five of them though. Right, there's but there's so one across the street. Right. There's so basically, we've put them anywhere people are thinking to look. Right, but you're putting them up here instead of like. No, they're, they're right we, where you yeah, there's one right next to you on the right. They need to be bigger, so, they yeah. need to be bigger they need to be and more bigger. bright. Because they do I because I see people die. making right turns so here all the time. We have to do black and white. It can't be anything but black and white. Because remember what I said? Black and yeah. white is regulatory. Right. Yeah. Oh. oh. So anything. So yellow is advisory. Uh. Yellow and orange are advisory. <laughs> black and white is regulatory. Um, and yeah. technically, so the only other sign I really know red. of that's regulatory that isn't black and white is a stop sign. But yeah, that's okay. so. If you if you make that right on red, uh. you're actually written up for failure to obey a black and white regulatory sign. Is what the actual and, and even the no right turn at, at, at the um, at the Northgate Mall, where there's like for some stupid reason you can't make a right turn. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That's that's, that's private property, though. That's the unfortunate thing. So yes. Oh. Okay, fact or fiction? Uh -oh. <laughs> the 1199. Oh, fiction. <laughs> Run your license plate in the rear. Mm -hmm. Not a not a. Uh, Get out of jail Absolutely not. Out of jail. Um, within the first week that I was on this department, I pulled somebody over uh, for drunk driving and arrested him. And so here's the way that works. Wait, what is it? What do we? What are we the 1199. About? So have you ever seen the license plate says 1199 Foundation? 1199 Foundation is a charity. It's a 501c3. It's a nonprofit that basically, if one of our officers is killed in the line of duty, it provides the benefits for you know the funeral and everything else. So it's a, it's a fundraiser. They also do scholarships and things like that. But anyway, the, 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 and we hear this all the time. They do nothing to dispel that myth, by the way. Well, that has changed. And also, we've caught a couple dealerships making their own. <laughs> so there was a dealership, I'm not going to say which one it was, in Marin <laughs> County that was actually marketing that as if you bought like you know a car that was over a hundred thousand dollars they put it on there for you um, so here's what happens if I pull somebody over who's an 1199 foundation member and they do anything like hey you know I'm an 1199, 1199 member I donated for, for a reason I contact the 1199 foundation I provide them with their name they revoke their membership and they are required by law because when they sign their when they donate anything that they're given other than like, you know, if they have like a shirt or something like that, but the license plate frame or any little like card that they get, it actually says property of CHP 1199 Foundation to be returned upon demand. Oh. So if they do that, the 1199 Foundation contacts them, says thank you for your donation. Um, we appreciate your support. However, you know, we, we, we don't no like longer want anymore. your support. Um, <laughs> please return these items and thank you. What's so. the myth? The myth is that if that, that, that plate is on there, that we're just going to turn a blind eye and let them do whatever they want. Um, I can't tell you how many Ferraris, Lamborghinis, you name it, that I've pulled over for. Yeah, but they're asking for it. And <laughs> getting you one. Right, and so, and so, I've, I've had conversations with people before, and my my response always, if somebody were to say something like that to me, is always, if you if you support this foundation, you support what we do. So you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, if that's an issue, then we can take it up. But yeah, you're going to get a ticket. You're going to get arrested, whatever the case may be. It's, we appreciate the support, but we only want your support if you actually support us. So, my, my you, you don't want fair weather friends? <laughs> well, we don't want anyone who's doing it just because they want something. Yes? Would, what, should, what would your opinion be? I'm driving an aging car. 
Okay. What would you recommend that they should need to get a new car which has the electronic safety support? Good system? question. The, 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 not a Tesla. What do you mean, like that? Pretty much lane. all those cars now, per, uh, most cars that are coming out now are integrating that technology. So you, what you're looking for is lane assist, mm -hmm. adaptive cruise control, um, sensors. Now remember what, what I called that stuff earlier, design complacency. Okay, right. so people will become reliant. Yeah. So uh, I took a crash one time, um, the individual lane change, somebody hit him. Why did you change lanes? Well, my sensor didn't say they were there. It's the car's fault. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They're Your fault. It's, it's design complacency. So I, we bought my wife a new car last year and it has all that adaptive cruise control and everything. I, I personally love it because it's when we're doing like long drives, you set that thing to whatever, at the max I'm gonna go this speed and you don't actually, the one I like it the most, I'm not gonna lie, is driving home from work in traffic because as long as I don't stop, or even if I do stop, it just, I'm not sitting there, gas, break, gas, break. <laughs> it's doing it for me. Now, obviously I'm paying attention, but um, it, it's, it is nice on those longer drives. Um, when it comes to talking about, you know, which car, I can't really recommend a car. Ask him what, wife, um, what car's wife, got, what he got his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you got my wife a Subaru Outback. Okay. Um, so I can't recommend a car. I recommend the car that you are the most comfortable in and you feel the most comfortable and secure. In. So, yes. We wisely object to cell phones, but now the car companies, oh. the more gadgets, the better your oh. car, and it's all right there on the Instagram. So, now. sorry, I have a question since you have a safe? Tesla. Yes. Is there uh, some sort of uh, game you can play on your... Not while you're driving. You only be in park... Uh, and contrary to popular belief, if you leave your hands off that wheel, it will tell you, and in about just under 60 seconds, not that I tested that, but as a pilot, I always test yeah. before I try, uh, it will say, sorry, discontinued, Yeah. and you can't turn it back on again. Perfect. Awesome. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, there are a lot of, unfortunately, look, here's, I, and you're, I'm going to be, you're only going to read the negatives in the news. As a law enforcement officer, trust me. I spend a ton of time trying to publicize the good that we do, and in two seconds, if something bad happens, it's everywhere. Um, there is a lot of great technology that comes in these vehicles. There is amazing safety features that they're coming out with now. However, there are, you're right, some of these, some of these displays have, it, it's almost more distracting than it is yeah. Beneficial. Changing the radio station is like five so, different things. Well, but now, <laughs> but it comes down to, again, knowing your your technology and utilizing it. So like when when we bought my wife this car, we sat in the driveway for an hour, <laughs> Learning the car. you know, pushing buttons and trying this and that. And, and by the time she drove it for the first time, everything was set. So it has a bank of 20 radio stations that are pre-programmed now. So she doesn't actually touch anything. Mm -hmm. She just, as she's driving, there's the little button and she can hit over or she can actually just hit the voice button and say, tune to whatever, and it goes. Um, but yeah, you're right. The technology is only as good as the person who utilizes it in the way that it's supposed to be utilized. It's a lot of fun as a passenger, but as a driver, it's, it's just dangerous. I know, I agree. And that's why like, they came out with the law that says you can't have a, a TV screen front of the rear, you know, in, in front of the back, uh, the front seats. I mean, we had a, there was, we actually did a, a Facebook post last, it was last winter. Uh, one of our sergeants driving down the road and he looked over and a uh, person's got an iPad mounted on the steering wheel and they're watching Friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. so when he pulled them over, of course, the iPad is nowhere to be found. And, and they're like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, no, yeah, that was the episode of Friends with, this is what was happening. Oh, that's and they're hysterical. like, all right, yeah, whatever, sign. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, there, there are a lot of, the technology is great in a lot of ways, but you have to utilize it responsibly to do so. Yes, sir. What do you think is going to happen with the, oh. yes, thank you. the move to the self-driving cars? Uh, in, in the context I'm, of our group here. I'll, I'll be honest with you, we don't know yet. Because there's, so I'm going to, I'll tell you about it. Uh, I got a call from KQED the other day. And they're basically writing this article about a self-driving car that did a drive from San Francisco to New York City. 
It was a, it, there was somebody in the vehicle with it, but they drove that entire distance in self-driving mode. Okay? Now, in the very first part, it's driving across the Golden Gate Bridge, and you can clearly see it's doing, I think it was 55 or 60 miles an hour. So the reporter contacted this company and said, oh, wait, it's a it's a 45 self, mile an hour, it's 45 mile an hour right. speed limit. They said self-driving car isn't it supposed to obey the speed limit. So the company said, well, under California's uh, basic speed law and impeding traffic, uh, for us to travel at 45 miles an hour would actually be slower than the flow of traffic. Therefore, legally, we can't drive 45 miles an hour. What? No. So I said, interesting. So then he went on to say, basically, that that car drove that entire distance in the fast lane. It never went out of the fast lane because they said that it just doesn't really work too well with vehicle merges. <laughs> and so I said, well, okay, let's time out here. When you watch that, were there people passing it on the right? And they said, yeah. I go, well, Hello. Uh -huh. you just used a law, you just interpreted a law saying that if the flow of traffic is a certain thing, I legally can't go under that no matter what lane I'm in. But yet at the same time, you're saying we're only in the fast lane and we won't break the speed limit. So the, the technology is developing. It's got a ways to go though. Um, we just had the, um, or I don't say we just had, there was just a follow-up story to uh, the man who was killed in San Francisco. I think it was a Tesla that uh, Model did three. identify him and... It, well, it wasn't, it wasn't on her, it wasn't, it was being, it was being driven okay. by a driver. But either way, so it, whatever test, whatever they claimed is that it should have identified and said something, done a but, threshold you know, breaking. But, doing, I, I know, I know, I'm just saying. going through an intersection, you're toast. The, the, the concept is good. Right, the concept is there, but it's you. I mean, we can go really deep into this, and we can we can look at the moral questions of a self-driving car, um, and that's that's the interesting thing to me, at least. Does a car sacrifice a pedestrian or the occupants of the vehicle? How does it make that choice? So, there's a lot that's still coming. Now, we are anything that comes up we absolutely work with it we research it we work with companies to try to help them understand how laws work so they can program things better um i mean we're even you know they're redoing that section of uh, 101 in the narrows there mm -hmm. well if you look at the paint the roadway paint is the new paint for self-driving cars mm -hmm. because it it identifies the cars identify it differently than the paint we've used forever so mm -hmm. i mean it's it's being planned for but we just don't know when it's really going to be My, mine has a limit for example if you're driving on benford road going up to the airport yeah yep. there's a speed limit that says this car will not drive faster than 45 miles per hour. yeah okay cool. if you're in our i try yeah just for fun you try it you know to see what's going on yeah and it'll say nope sorry yeah you know it'll slow you down to 45. so you know you if, if somebody's told you it was not a tesla because you can't just punch in. I want to no, do no, 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 no. It wasn't that the cross country wasn't a Tesla. Yeah, so it you was can't just a, punch in. I'm going to do 80. That's fine. It's a no, 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 no. no, no, no it no, was no. a vehicle that um, that was modified to be a self driving car. No, I understand. Yeah. No, it's so. just. Yeah, is no. there a radio frequency stuff that's telling this to the cars? How do they? How do the cars? Know I, that is above and beyond my. It has a lot. To, I mean, it's just like, for example, on Waze. Like if you if you pull up Waze right now and you're driving down the freeway, Waze knows what the speed limit is mm -hmm. on the freeway. It's it's pre-programmed. Don't do that when oh. you're driving. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> unless it's mounted somewhere that you're not touching it. Yes, um, but there's pre-programming. So yes. Say I'm leaving a restaurant and had a, over a couple hours. Of, I've been sitting down the whole time mm -hmm. and had a couple half a bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm okay until I get a better idea once I stand up because mm -hmm. I'm sitting down the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, I walked to the car and my wife asked me if I'm. Okay to drive. Okay to drive. Okay. Uh, how do I find out? <coughs> say no. I, mean, I know how I feel. Wait, you, no know, you, you, you know. You know your limits. To a point oh what? So there's no way for me to say you're going to be at this level. It, it's impossible. So here's here's what you need. Here's what to know about consuming alcohol. Um, number one, how fast you absorb it, obviously based on what is in your stomach. So alcohol right. is not absorbed in your stomach. It's actually metabolized in your intestine. Okay. So if you've had a huge meal and then you put the wine on top of it. It's going to take longer before it gets into your system. However, um, no matter what, once you've had your last drink, 
it is into your system in you. So say you have a drink at one hour after that, your blood alcohol concentration is the highest it's going to be. And then you'll start going down. Okay, so um, my recommendation is... So like first in, first out? <laughs> um, so one of the most, so I think everybody knows, right, our very common times for pulling over DUI drivers. It's between about 10, 11 p.m. and 3 to 4 in the morning. Obviously, 2 o'clock is get out of the bars, it's our busy time. Um, but one of the most, one of the other most common times for us to find drunk drivers is between about 7 and 11 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Because they've gone out on Friday night and Saturday night, partied, had a lot to drink, and <clears throat> if you know about how our bodies work, um, alcohol is a depressant. So when you're dumping this alcohol in your system, your body tries to counter that, right? Because your body always wants to be at, at normal. So what your body does is it pumps this chemical into your system that is designed to wake you up called acetylcholine. So what happens is eventually you just have too much of this depressant in your system and you go to sleep. You actually pass out but your body is still pumping this chemical in. So you fall asleep at, we'll say it's somebody who's left the bar at two in the morning, they fall asleep at three. So they're actually at three o'clock, they're at their highest point. So let's say hypothetically, they're at a point two zero at three in the morning. Oh. Let's just say hypothetically, we're using this for a number. They fall asleep at three in the morning. Well, this acetylcholine is still going into their system. So what happens is it just keeps dumping and dumping and dumping. So about four hours later, five hours later, they wake up and they have so much of this chemical in their system, they feel good. They're like, okay, let's, I mean, let's be honest in here. Has anybody in here ever, you know, drank overnight and then you wake up, you know, four or five hours later and you actually don't feel bad, but after you've been up for about an hour, you're like, yeah, never mind, this isn't right. It's because your body has so much of this chemical in its system, you actually feel better. It doesn't necessarily, very commonly we'll get people saying, I didn't think I was drunk. Well, it's because they have so much of this chemical, so what they do is they get in their car and they go to drive home or drive to wherever. Now, if they slept for four hours, every single person burns at the same rate. We all burn alcohol in our system at a rate of 0.02% an hour. So if you sleep for four hours, it burns 0.08. So if you fell asleep at a 2.0, you're still a 0.12 four hours later. So we pull them over in the morning on their way back from, for us very commonly, it's on their way back from San Francisco. Majority of our DUI arrests are northbound. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll pull them over and we'll say, okay, well, when was the last time you drank? Last night. Okay, what time did you have your last drink? Whatever, two, 2 a.m. or 1.45. All right, and we'll work backwards. So here's my advice. That was a really long answer to this. Um, give your wife the keys. If in doubt, just give your wife the keys. I mean, it's not worth it. It's, it's just not... If you have somebody else who can drive you, it, and I, I'll, I'll testify to myself, if, if I go out to dinner or even like there was uh, one night where I was working on a big project at our house, I had had a beer and I realized I didn't have something I needed for this project, I had to go to the hardware store. So I go up to my wife, hey, can you drive me down to Friedman's really quick? Yeah, no problem, we drive down there. Because here's the thing, even if you're not legally drunk, not .08, Say a pedestrian walks into that crosswalk and you hit them. Regardless of whether or not you're drunk, that crash report is still going to be coded as had been drinking. That can be a big, big problem. Civilly, legally, it, it, can, it can cause issues. So I always recommend shy on the side of caution. Just, it's, it's, it's not worth it. Just let your wife drive or take an Uber, take a Lyft. I tell, I tell teenagers in all my classes now, it will cost you less money to call Bowers Limo in San Francisco and have them send you a bus <laughs> than it will to get a DUI. And that's just, the, that's just the criminal side of it. If you, if you crash and you hurt someone, the civil, you know, you, you, double indemnity here, you can be criminally responsible and civilly responsible. If you get sued civilly, that's a whole nother level too. So um, obviously I, I, abundance of caution, just, you know, and, and when, when it happens, just say, you know what, you're right. Uh, trust me, it's great, gives you good points. So mm -hmm. just admit she's right. Excellent. Yes, oh sorry, I was just going Yes, sorry. If I'm driving down the freeway in the fast lane, mm -hmm. 
if I, I figure if I have a car in front of me, I'm not going to get pulled over. <laughs> oh, so okay. here's what I'll say. Have you ever gone fishing? <laughs> no, I don't like fishing. But have you ever gone fishing? No. Yes. Okay. I would say yes. So, really like fishing. When you throw that line into the pond, you don't want the little minnow. You want the big fish. That being said, if you're breaking the speed limit, you're breaking the speed limit. I've, we've heard that all the time, right? You always have the scout that goes ahead, right? You, you let them take off and you hold back about five or six car lengths and right. somebody gets it. And, and it could work out in your benefit because we might see them first. But I will tell you very often, if I'm doing speed enforcement, I'm parked, I'm using LIDAR. So LIDAR is vehicle specific. So very often what I will do is I will get, say I, I have two cars coming at me in the fast lane. We visually estimate speed first before we pull that trigger and get that speed reading. So I'm gonna look at traffic and I'm gonna see that car coming. But if I see you behind doing the same, kind of roughly the same speed, I'm gonna get their speed reading and then I'll get your speed reading as well. So I'm kind of looking at the difference between you two. It's not unheard of for us to do double stops. So we'll, we'll pull on the freeway, I'll, I'll get in behind you, inevitably you'll pull over because I'm coming up and I'll get right next to you with my lights on and over my public address system I will say follow me and then I'll get behind that other vehicle and I'll pull them over and we'll just all go over the shoulder together. So, oh, that's rude. <laughs> well usually I'm, when I'm, I'm just, I'm not going over, well I am, yeah. you know, the speed limit, but I'm not yeah. really going yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's, it's very common. We're, we're obviously looking for the, the faster of the two speeds. Unless there's something that So in other words, if everybody's us, going 70 here, if I'm going 72... Then you're the, you're the big fish. <laughs> so you can be stopped. I mean, it's, it's, it, this was, it was interesting because my aunt, for lack of a better term, came to me one day and, and said, well, how can you, if, if, if I'm doing, if say there's five of us doing... 75 miles an hour, you can't just pull me over. Yeah, I absolutely can. There's five of you breaking the law, I can pull over whoever I so choose at that point. Um, you know, is there safety in numbers? Yeah, maybe. But technically, letter, then we're talking letter of the law here. Of course. Then yes. We're all. I know, exactly. But spirit of the law, we're usually looking for I don't want to say the most dangerous driver, but you know what I mean? We're looking for the person who's going the fastest. No, that's that's what I meant. That's... Yeah, yes. So typically, say you're doing 72, the person in front of you is doing 75. I'm probably, I'm going to go for the person doing 75. Right. Unless for some reason I have another reason to pull you over. You're swerving, you're, I see you on your phone, or something like that. In other words, what, I, what you're saying, what I should know and do know, use your comments. Yes. Common sense is probably, uh, I got 40,000 sections in the California Vehicle Code, but I could throw all them away and just tell people drive using common sense. Because it's so much goes of it. through the yellow light or through the red light, about two or three minutes later, guess who's behind you? Exactly. I know. That's what I tell. And again, when I teach my teen classes, I tell them that all the time. I go, it doesn't matter where you're going. You're going to end up next to them in traffic or at a stop sign or stoplight. And, and on top of that, the most common thing, you know, so one night we, we did a test because I actually wanted to know how to do this or I wanted to be able to say I actually tried this. So we had three of our units start at this exact same location. So we started at oh, right. um, southbound 101 at, at Atherton Avenue in Nevada. It was about two o'clock in the morning. So there's, if you've never driven on our there's roadways, there's like a yeah. car. <laughs> so what we did is we started at we had one vehicle doing 65, one vehicle do 75, and one vehicle do 80. And the vehicle that was doing 80 got to our fixed point, which was the um, North Tower of the Golden Gate Bridge, about 35 seconds or so-ish before. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not, like, it's just not worth it. So, um, yeah, I, I just... It's, it's patience, it's common sense. And if I could take driving down to three things and say, if you have these three things, you will be a good driver. Patience, common sense, common courtesy. Yep. I was going from mm -hmm. south through Petaluma. Mm -hmm. It was stop and go. And I mm -hmm. usually leave a car lane. If they're a little yeah. bit more than a car lane, okay. stop and go. 
And yep. how many people cut how in front of it? Yeah. No, no, no. It was in back. Oh. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's. Beep, beep, hurry up beep. And hurry up and don't move. Yeah. Yep. It's I mean, patience, right? What did I just say? Patience. So. I have no I idea. Have to make it uh, end of the night. Yeah. We want to thank Andy for oh, yeah. All um. Do you have anything after this? Or? Oh, will we do a raffle? Level? Oh, okay. All right. Um, if you have another, I'm gonna kind of pack all my stuff up. But uh, if you have another question, just come talk to me at the back of the room, and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, and also, if you ever, if you have any questions, you ever need anything from me, um, I work at our office right across the freeway in Puerto Madera. I'm unfortunately there five days a week, so uh, you can call me. You've only really uh, been there for ten me. years. Yeah. If we're pulled over, can we drop your name? You can, but what will happen is they will then call me and ask if I know you. So uh, if I say no, then it's even worse. So. Uh, and if I do anybody. say yes, then it usually ends up with me calling that person going, what is wrong with you? You deserved that ticket. So. Uh,